So you guys have been asking for it. Here it is. Is it a good idea? Should I have done this? I'm not quite sure. What am I talking about? Let's jump into this together and I'll explain. Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to talk about cutting this Harbor Freight floor mat. Now, you can get these all over the place. So everybody that's written to me has called this a Harbor Freight floor mat. And again, you get these a lot of different places. And it's about a 15 millimeter a thick piece of foam, a little bit short, I think 14.7 millimeters. So... Can you cut it with an ortho laser? Now I have a 15 watt input and it's about 3.5, 4 watts output. Um, and this is pretty thick. Now I'm using a G8 lens and air assist and I think you need to have both the G8 lens and air assist to attempt this. Now this does seem to off gas. Now I have a completely enclosed case for my ortho laser so and it evacuates outside away from my shop and that's where I feel comfortable doing this because the air envelope is separated from obviously myself and whatever I'm cutting. Uh, however I did open the top take a little bit of a whiff there is some outgassing uh, from a smell perspective, it wasn't that horrible, but I don't know if it's good, bad for you. Uh, naturally, anything like this cannot be good for you, so I'm not saying that. So uh, do all this at your own caution. However, with the laser, again, set about midpoint, I was able to cut this. Now, one of the pieces, I ran a couple different scenarios, and I thought this was rather interesting. Now, one of the things to start off with, you'll notice that the top piece is textured and the bottom isn't. I ran a couple separate tests between the top and the bottom and really found no difference in its ability to cut. So I stuck with the top because this is where I would want to cut anyway, as well as, you know, engrave or emboss onto. So what I had done before doing this piece is I had uh, completed a couple setups to kind of get me close to where I needed to be. And then I ran a couple test cuts here. So I started out down here actually at five millimeters a second at five passes, 10 millimeters a second, 11 passes, 20 millimeters a second and 21 passes. Um, now, basically, I can pop out the first two, i.e. the uh, 5 and 5 and the 10 and 11. There is still a little bit, but you notice almost none of the 20 by 21 uh, is cut out. Now, one of the things to kind of keep in mind is one of the things I typically do is I double a successful recipe. So I knew the 10 and 11 was good. So I went to 20 and 21. So in other words, I ran it twice as fast, but I did basically almost twice as many cuts as before. And as you can see, that did not go through except for a little piece. I reran the test then with this going up to uh, five and six. In other words, five millimeters a second, six passes, 10 millimeters a second, 12 passes, 20 millimeters a second, and 23 passes. So I doubled. Um, this easy and then added one to it. Here you can see I got a little bit more through but really not much more uh, with two more passes. So one of the things that it, it's clear with this type of foam uh, the slower is more efficient. Uh, again with the five and five I think I got the best cut possible. The kerf is rather big in the 5 and 5, so kind of keep that in mind in some of your measurements. You'll probably get a larger kerf. You could probably also tune the beam a little bit better. Uh, again, I went halfway through. Uh, I, I think you could probably do a little bit more of the focusing, but it's not going to make too big of a difference. Um, so I, I definitely recommend the slower speed and the less passes to get a more efficient cut through this so it spends more time dwelling. But you know my rule with that, the more time dwelling, the more likelihood of a fire. So again, that's where air assist comes in. Very handy with this to make sure that that doesn't happen. Well, I shouldn't say make sure it doesn't happen, but to reduce the risk of it happening. I want to clarify myself because you can never say that you won't get a fire. Now, with that, um, I think this stuff is pretty interesting. 
And again, if you can do it in a safe way where you're not exposed to the fumes, because again, I'm not sure really what the fumes are going to do to you. Uh, I, I think it can be an interesting product to use to make various things. I will be making a couple things out of this in probably the next couple episodes. So because I do find it very interesting because it's economical, easy to get and very robust. So with that, hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, hey, be careful first off, you know, no warranties with this and give it a big thumbs up. Swag shops up there. Subscribe over there and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.